Now to our headline at 11, man's best friend, possibly man's best chance at a cure for cancer. A local dog story of survival being researched as a potential breakthrough. Thanks for staying with us at 11. I'm Marley Ginter. And I'm Tony Lopez. The dog facing a daunting diagnosis with one last hope at UC Davis to turn things around. Her terminal cancer was spreading, but now two years later, she's still fighting. Researchers are studying this golden retriever as the gold standard. Your reporter covering Yellow County, Ashley Sharp, went to the vet hospital, joining us now in studio. Wow. Well, this is all thanks to a clinical trial. The point is to study what worked and learn how researchers can refine that so more patients are successful. This story isn't just about one dog and her success. It's about the future and why these lessons learned could provide a new standard of cancer care for animals and people too. Okay, come on, sweetheart. Okay, there we go. Okay, all right, this way. All right. The positive affirmations. Start the second, pause, hit the pavement. I think it's going to be a good appointment today. Every time Lola makes this walk. You know where we are. Up to UC Davis's vet hospital. It's her equivalent of her dog ID. Okay, come on over here. Come here sit down. That's a good girl. Where at each checkup, they wish for good news. <laughs> How have you been? Thank you for always being there for Lola through all her stuff. Lola, at nine years old, was diagnosed with an aggressive, deadly cancer that had already spread to her lungs. Even chemotherapy or radiation therapy at that point, um, the median survival is usually around 60 days. Dr. Robert Rabune enrolled Lola in his clinical trial testing inhaled immunotherapies on canine cancer. That kind of stimulates the immune system to hopefully recognize the cancer. At first, Lola failed out of the trial, but then came the delayed response that saved her life. The big surprise was a month or so after finishing that, when we went to check the x-rays and realized that everything was gone. That terminal diagnosis two years ago has today disappeared. So what we're trying to figure out is what makes Lola different, what makes her part of that 10% that responded. Okay, way, long way away. away. How is she doing overall? Dr. Kent is Lola's veterinarian. Stay a good girl, I know, I know. I got a really good look, there's okay. nothing there. Okay, good, that's okay. so good. Checking for any true signs of a tumor's return. Her lungs sound clear, which is good. As family waits with bated breath. We'll do her chest x-ray just to make sure you know, everything's good still. Okay. And now, Lola's off for the x-ray. The last hurdle in this healing marathon is a clear scan. And so, they wait. Good girl. Lola. Good news. Good news. Lola is still <laughs> cancer free. You know, this is pretty grim when you start to see this. These should not be here. Her lungs clear. Really, I saw nothing, which is amazing. And Lola's mom, Allison, knows a thing or two about a tumor because puppy Lola long ago helped her heal. She was, you know, home with us for a couple months and I was having brain surgery. And so it's definitely kind of like two ends of the journey. I think there's a little bit of, I want to take care of her the same way she took care of me. Now soaking up the extra time. I would hope she's not like one in a million in the future. I would hope this would like become the normal experience. The golden girl shining new light on the future of cancer care. We get super excited, but but we also remember that there's, you know, nine other dogs that weren't Lola in this study. And so it does, um, it motivates us to keep going. It's step one in one day perfecting cancer treatment and making it available to not just all animals, but humans too. We have a lot of more long-term successes now, and that's, that's why I do this, is because we can beat cancer. And whether she lives another day Come or here, decade. Here. Oh boy, she's like, I think I'm at the end of it. There's much to learn in the legacy oh, down, okay. of Lola. Right up, there we go, okay. 
I've talked to Lola's mom a couple times since we shot this story earlier this month. She's living her best life. I wanted to show you guys this photo of them at the beach uh, just a few weeks ago. The Aww. breeze uh, on her face, yeah. just really living life. Yeah. I mean, truly such a testament to the work done at this veterinary hospital that they can wow. turn something like this around. Right. It's amazing. We and when it lot. works, Go ahead. I hope they call it the Lola treatment. The Lola treatment. <laughs> you know? So cute. I was going to say we have... 25 minutes, 30 minutes of show left. You're not supposed to make us cry this I, early. You know, this is personal. I lost a pet to cancer earlier mm -hmm. this year. You know, I mean, we all, cancer touches everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. Some way or another. And you, you look at a, a dog like Lola and you think, well, my dog, my cat, my animals, my mom, my grandmother, you know, you think yeah. about when something like this will be widely available and, and that's the mission, right? Yeah. It's, it's to get something like this perfected. It's not ready yet for everybody, but yeah. one day. Giving us hope. Absolutely.